My name is Franco Cavalieri and coming to you with the Potential Within podcast. And with this series, we're going to talk a little bit about how we achieve better health by optimizing body and mind through genomic optimization. I know that sounds a bit crazy, sounds a bit deep, but what we do at Biologic, the parent company that brings the resource material, the science, for potential within to exist and, and, and have material, Biologic Pharma Medical is our company that does genomic and proteomic research. And what, would, what we do there is we try to track various proteins associated with recovery and restoration. I want you to keep in mind that we have genetic programming built into us in every single cell that's designed to promote restoration, recovery, and repair. And the challenge we have is in maintaining their activity throughout life. So today we're going to talk about lean body mass and skeletal muscle and how it's associated with a reduced risk for mortality and morbidity. So I'll give you a little bit of a path here uh, to preface where um, I came from and where I'm going. In terms of the research, my research uh, originally started as performance research. I was a bodybuilder while studying uh, human nutrition and biochemistry at the University of British Columbia doing my undergrad. And all the research I did then, which was uh, not nearly as deep as we do today, uh, was, in, was basically focused in on improving performance and recovery for bodybuilding and lifting to to be my absolute best on stage. So that initiative really began a journey of research that honed in on genes responsible for performing, for performance, athletic performance. But you be soon begin to realize that that athletic performance is closely associated with general efficiency of the body. The more you can create efficiency at a cellular level to improve mitochondrial activity, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell where ATP is generated, the more you can improve general performance in terms of uh, conditioning and the ability to put load and stress on the body and then the body being able to resist and be resilient to that stress. But as the years go by, and I evolved beyond um, bodybuilding to studying the nature of the lean body mass in the context of health and fitness, mortality, and morbidity, you begin to realize that there's a lot of genetic programming that's associated with athletic performance that's also associated with metabolic efficiency because athletic performance is directly dependent upon metabolic efficiency. So... We start to hear today in the current research how in, uh, someone who may have um, a higher lean body mass or more skeletal muscle uh, will be able to resist disease better than someone that does not. I'll, I'll lead you to kind of think about someone you know that may have ended up in the hospital. And when they come out, even if it's only a one week term, you tend to see a diminishing of lean body mass. And the reason is that when you are ill, insulin efficiency tends to decline because of the illness, inflammation throughout the body, and therefore nutrient availability to the muscle mass declines. But the immune system will actually begin to nip away at your muscle tissue to be able to get amino acids it needs to induce optimal immunity. And so that, that, that muscle mass tends to diminish quite fast when you're sick. What's critically important is the research we know today that correlates muscle mass and the strength, specifically the strength of that muscle mass, uh, correlates it to morbidity and mortality. And the less your muscle mass is, the lower your muscle mass is, the higher the morbidity rate and the risk for you to fail to overcome serious disease. And so... You know, I've always urged people to stay healthy in by way of being being involved in some sort of regular exercise program. And the difficulty is that people find it extremely difficult to find perspective, find a perspective, a reason to stay on an exercise program because the aesthetic results associated with an exercise program, meaning the fat loss versus the lean body mass uh, improvements, um, take time. 
And so we have to kind of forget about, forget about the amount of time it takes to achieve that aesthetic appeal we're looking for. But to recognize the immediate, the immediate effects of exercise upon immediately engaging. And the interesting thing is that for me, I need to have an understanding of the biochemistry and the physiology of what's happening in order to change that mind, to change that perspective, and then gain the motivation based on that new perspective. To stay on track with an exercise program, because that's critically important, is being consistent. Being consistent. So I want to talk a little bit about the muscle mass and the chemicals that that muscle mass secretes during physical load. And these are called myokines. That muscle mass, one day, if it's in tune, will save your life. That muscle mass, every day that you train it, that you impose physical load, that it has to stress itself and contract to resist the weight you're putting on that bar, each time it contracts, it releases myokines, muscle chemicals. These myokines circulate throughout the body, and they initiate a restorative process throughout the body, not just the localized muscle mass you're training. And this is exciting because now we're beginning to find the methods and mechanisms that validate a regular exercise program at any age, at every stage of life in order to maintain longevity and health. The interesting thing is every organ in the body has been shown and known now to have receptor sites for these myokines. And the myokines come in different forms. They're proteins, cytokines, basically inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines that are released by that muscle mass in order to counter the physical load you're putting on it. You have to think about the body and your genome, the genes that are actually programmed within your cells, how and why they're designed. Because they're designed to help you cope with change in your environment, to help you cope with stress that you impose on the body to help you adapt, adapt to the changing environment. And so as you impose stress on the body in the form of this physical load, this resistance training, the walk every day, a, a walk that imposes a little bit of a challenge on the body, these myokines are secreted in order to recover, restore, and improve efficiencies of the mitochondria, improve efficiencies in the brain. BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, is secreted in order to improve brain plasticity in response to the load you put on your muscle mass. So you're building muscle, but you're also building a healthier brain at the same time. The pancreas, the liver, the heart, they all have receptor sites for many of these different myokines. Every time you put load on the muscle, you're secreting chemicals that improve the efficiencies of those organs and maintain their longevity and restorative programming. Every one of those organs has cells within it that have genetic programs that restore and recover, but they go lazy if you do not create an imposition that the body has to recover from and restore from and adapt to. So that's the nature of the training in the gym or even a brisk walk that poses a challenge for you. We have to change perspective. The mind drives everything and the mind will motivate you to stay on track and stay consistent with your training if you understand the value, the immediate value of that workout, of that resistance training, while you train consistently toward another result which is more aesthetic and physically appealing. So I've done a lot of work in this area in the laboratory in the context of the environment and the physical load we put on our, on our body, also affecting telomeres. I don't know if you've heard of the telomere. The telomere is the end cap on our chromosomes, on our DNA. And this end cap with every cell division and replication tends to shorten so that we have a limited replication that will occur. And then over time, as that telomere shortens to the point where it's really small, then the cells are said to go into senescence, which means they begin to uh, degrade and, and age 
to the point of dysfunction. And so a cool thing to know is that when you impose this physical exercise on the body, the telomeres grow. Research has shown that um, if you're consistent with your workouts and your resistance training, as long as you don't stress the body, because here's the cool thing, too much stress will actually shorten the telomere as well. But the right kind of stress working out to the point of challenging the body but not hurting the body helps to lengthen the telomere. It activates telomerase. So then in our own personal research downstairs in the laboratory, and one day I'll bring you guys down there, we talk about then how we can affect the telomere independent of exercise so that we can add supplements that we know can improve telomere length in addition to the activity that exercise may apply. And so what we're trying to accomplish downstairs in the laboratory is to say, hey, let's find what lifestyle activities, whether it's cold plunge, whether it's fasting. We know there's a lot of metabolic and cellular benefits to these these activities that create a biohack. And so we say, well, what does that biohack mean? Let's find the genes and the proteome that's affected by that biohack. And then let's determine which compounds. There's a lot of nutrients now that we're finding. Curcumin is one that actually affects the telomere by way of inhibiting inflammatory activity. Pro-inflammatory activity shortens that telomere. Believe it or not, exercise secretes, causes the secretion of myokines that have anti-inflammatory activity. And this is why they say for arthritis, engage in exercise. Oh, yeah, your joints may be dis un uncomfortable and you may have discomfort right after the exercise for a day or two, but the long-term effects of exercise are better control of inflammation. Why? Because those myokines are circulating to activate internal genetic programs that are designed to recover and restore. And by leading a lifestyle that's not active, they become dormant, they become methylated. There's a process now that's being discussed and studied intensely, acetylation, deacetylation, and methylation of our genes, of our DNA. And this is an epigenetic effect, which means our environment, epigenetic, is affecting our genes. And silencing many of the genes that need to be resuscitated in order for them to work for us. In fact, these epigenetic silencing activities, methylation in particular, are known to silence genes that are responsible to function as tumor suppressors. And so, um, you know, cancer, chronic inflammation, a lot of these diseases that are prolific in first world countries, Alzheimer's, they're associated with DNA methylation and the failure for genetic activity that's built in you to do its job the way it was designed originally. And believe it or not, exercise itself begins a process to fix those problems by inducing and producing these myokines, BDNF, one of them, interleukin-3, uh, interleukin-6. These are these are immunocytokines that affect inflammation. These are all secreted by the muscle mass. So it's said today that that muscle mass is much like an organ. And here's something interesting to understand is that the fat mass, the fat mass is also functioning in the body like an organ. And it's known to be over secreting inflammatory compounds, cytokines, that then create a pro-inflammatory body. And so, you know, as we age and, stay, and, and go through our later stages of life, it becomes more difficult to maintain lean body mass. So what do we need to do? You have to maintain the physical activity. The physical activity you did when you were younger at, you know, maybe a more moderate level, but critically important for that muscle mass maintenance is enough protein, protein to be able to maintain and rebuild that. That muscle mass is built um, using protein building blocks, amino acids. And so as a bodybuilder, we consumed in excess 
of one gram of protein per day per pound of body weight. For me at that time, it was over 220 grams of protein a day. Today, I weigh about 190 pounds and I consume about 150 grams of protein a day still at age 58, but I work out four or five days a week pretty intensely and I do cardio two, two days a week. So, um, you know, I'm not training with the same intensity that I did before, but I'm maintaining the muscle mass and the strength to reduce the risk of morbidity and mortality and continue to produce the myokines that work for me to restore, recover, and maintain youth. And that's the perspective you need to maintain, is staying active every day, doing something physical every day to maintain muscle mass so that you can rebuild, so that you can stay youthful. Taking enough protein a day, one gram per pound of body weight as a bodybuilder is a lot. But as you progress and you are a non-bodybuilder that's non-competitive, even half a gram a day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, 75 grams of protein a day in order to maintain the muscle mass. You need to work out at least four days a week in order to perpetuate that muscle mass. Working out once or twice a week doesn't do it because it does not maintain a continuous, repetitive repair and restore program that again, is already active within your genes, but needs to be boosted so that it works for you like it did when you were younger. It's all in your body waiting to be f- resurrected. This, th- and this is the nature of potential within. That potential is within you to restore, recover, and rebuild. For athletes, the potential is within you to achieve anything you want to achieve if you have the right strategy and the right drive. But it all comes with mindset, changing perspective, To maintain muscle mass for longevity, the perspective is, if I work out every day, I'm going to feel better each day. And you feel it. And you have to try to associate with it. You have to, you have to identify with that improvement in state of mind and state of body each day in order to stay with it each day. I got to tell you, I had four days that I didn't work out, four days in a row. And by the fourth day, and that was yesterday, I was, I was, I was a mess. I was grumpy because there are multiple things that you become addicted to when you work out. The endorphins, the serotonin balance, and that's just giving you the mindset, the drive, the will to succeed, not just in the gym, but in life. Stay fit, stay active, and you will live a long, healthy life.